Today we have a special speaker, Emeritus Professor Johan Saranwanabuku. So my talk is about Malaysia at 60. Uh, what sort of hope can we have for a more inclusive uh, nation? And, uh, you know, without further ado, let me just get on with my PowerPoint presentation. I'm sorry, but, you know, we academics are full of words, so it's unfortunately going to be very wordy. Uh, you know, so this is my first slide, uh, but I think those of you on Facebook will probably be able to read it. Uh, but unfortunately, the audience here, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't present it on the, on the screen. So I'm, I'm going to start off with the idea that um, all nations, including the Malaysian one, is a social construct. I mean, we, we have created this uh, thing called the nation state. Uh, it's, it's a modern thing, uh, you know, suppose it had been started by the Europeans after the end of the 30-year uh, war, the Peace of uh, Westphalia. Uh, so uh, I'm going to read you this very satirical poem by Daniel Defoe, uh, which is actually, I took it from uh, Benedict Anderson's book, uh, Imagine Communities. So this is a description of the Englishman. Thus, from a mixture of all kinds began that hatterous thing, an English man. The eager rapes and furious lust, in eager rapes and furious lust begot betwixt a painted Briton and a Scot, while gendering offspring quickly learned to bow and yoke their heifers to the Roman plough. And from whence a mongrel half-bred race there came with neither name nor nation, speech or fame to whose hot veins new mixtures quickly ran, infused twixt a Saxon and a Dane, whilst the rank daughters to their parents just received all nations with promiscuous lust, this nauseous brood directly did contain the well-extracted blood of Englishmen. So, so uh, the Englishman is obviously a very, uh, you know, mixed person. In fact, when Daniel therefore uh, penned this poem. He is the, you know, he's the one that wrote Robinson Crusoe, as we all know. His idea was to show uh, the world, or at that point of time in 1701, uh, that Britain didn't have to be so xenophobic. You know, uh, that we are actually a very mixed race. You know, the, Brit the, the Englishman is mixed race. Of course, now we know the UK, of course, consists of you know the Welsh, the Scots, uh, etc. You know, Irish. Uh, and if you look at the next slide, uh, with the next uh, thing which uh, they can see, uh, uh, this is this is a uh, this is a description of a country which is called North Macedonia. North Macedonia is a tiny little country uh, of about two million, and Macedonia, as we know, was a big place in, in the old days, and Alexander the Great came from there. <laughs> And uh, it's, uh, it's got Macedonians, Albanians, Turks, Romani, Serbs, Bosniaks, Aromanians, etc. And we just go on. And of course, religiously, it's got Orthodox Christians. Uh, it's got Islam, about 32 million, uh, 32 percent. So you see, all nations, in a sense, are very mixed. In fact, uh, you know, there are only a few very monocultural countries in this world, North Korea. Japan, maybe. Uh, the rest of us are totally diverse and mixed. Uh, so that's my first point. Uh, and uh, as Anderson says in his book, uh, excellent book, you know, uh, Imagine Communities, written in 1983, uh, capitalism helped to consolidate nations by print media. It's a long story. Uh, you know, now we have social media, which may, makes it even more, more complicated. Uh, so that idea of solidarity, that idea that we are all one community having a, uh, you know, a, 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 a common destiny, that is a thing that we create ourselves, right? Uh, so for Malaysia, there were two important moments as a nation, uh, we'll put in back in, in, in inverted commas, the declaration of independence of the Federation of Malaya, 1957, as we all know, uh, and then the Federation of Malaysia's formation in 1963 when Malaysia was, uh, was created and was born. In fact, one part of, of that entity broke away in 1965. I'm living in that place now, Singapore. <laughs> that is also called a nation. <laughs> All right, so, 
so you see how, how, how interesting this is. So Malaysia is ethnically diverse, multicultural. Uh, it is actually ranked, I checked you know, the, the ranks, uh, Malaysia's rank is of 59 in racial diversity. The most diverse countries in the world, I think, are usually in, are in Africa. Yeah, you know, and because they were simply divided by the colonialism, they sat in a table in Brussels, somebody said, and just drew the maps. So these are the Belgians. And we similarly were created by, by British colonialism. And if you read the work of uh, somebody I like very much, uh, the, the theorist Will Kim Licker from Canada, uh, he is uh, from uh, Queen's University. He writes about multiculturalism. He says very few states are not very few states are not multinational and polyethnic. Multinational means they consist of First Nations. In the case of Canada, you have the First Nations, right? In our case, we have the First Peoples. We have the original peoples, Orang Asli, and so on, and Orang Asan. And they're also polyethnic. It means to say they are migrant communities, which then come to the uh, to, to form part of this, uh, uh, this nation state. Or probably better to say state nations. <laughs> you know, uh, so, so that, that is the reality of the world today. Uh, and we look at Malaysia, uh, of course, the original peoples, or you like to call them First Nations, are the Orang Asli. And also well, the, the Borneo states, they like to prefer the term Orang Asar, uh, the natives of Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, and the polyethnic part of Malaysia are the ethnic groups of Malaysia, the Chinese, the Indians, the new migrants, uh, probably, possibly Rohingyas, etc., who will pop, uh, in the future become, uh, become our citizens. So I, I move on to the next slide. And if you look at Malaysia's population now, of course, uh, if you look at it broadly, we have uh, the 50.1% uh, Malays or Malay Muslims, because Malays by definition are Muslims. We have about 22.6% of Chinese, uh, non-Malay, Bumi Putra, and other indigenous groups, about 11.8%. Indians, Indian Malaysians, or do we call ourselves Baratians? <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> Indian Malaysians are 6.7, and other groups 8.8. Yes, the new uh, India, you know, India is calling itself Bharat. You know? Bharat means West, can eh? in this kind of yeah. and another one, Mahabharata. Bharat. Okay, all right. Okay, and look at the diversity on the other side of of uh, of the of the South China Sea. Malaysia is also separated by this uh, massive sea. Sarawak. 2.6 million population made out of 26 different ethnic groups. Maybe they're still counting. Uh, Iban make, about, make up about 30%, etc. Kenya, Kayan, uh, Punan, Biasa. By the way, this is all in the Malaysian constitution, the new, uh, the late, the late latter versions. Uh, they are recognized as natives of Sa uh, Sabah and Sarawak. Sabah, 3.5 million people, minorities, and they are basically. Uh, minorities within Malaysia, right? Uh, so the largest group, Kadasan Dusun, etc., Bajau, Murut, 13 main languages spoken, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, you know, I have all these uh, facts and figures here, I won't bore it for you with it. So that's the uh, composition of the Malaysian nation state. And now we move on to my main uh, sort of point that I want to put across. Uh, and, and where we should be moving or we should be heading. In fact, we are already there, or, although it's basically work in progress, I would say, you know, it's work in progress. Uh, and, and I would say, I've written this, written about this in Aliran, uh, multicultural citizenship should be, multicultural citizenship taken in a very broad sense, should be, and is, I think, the bedrock of an inclusive Malaysian state, right? Malaysian nation state. Um, do you know that Bumi Putra is not even in the Malaysian constitution? It's a, it's a new addition. It's a new construct, to put it plainly, right? Uh, but, but it's, it's an NEP construct. It's an NEP construct. And uh, I have written a piece uh, in Alira and said, are we all not Bumi Putra? Because I believe that if we go by the principle, which is accepted quite universally about citizenship, uh, on, on what the basis of citizenship is the principle of jus soli, not jus sanguinis. Jus soli is right of soil, 
whereas Jus sanguinis is right of blood. And the Jus sanguinis idea was used by, by the Chinese, by Taiwanese, for example, and China as well. And if you're a Chinese anywhere in the world, you can apply to be a citizen, right? But now it's not really practiced anymore. But anyway, the basic principle is right of soil. So we're all sons of the soil, huh? as long as you're born here. Yeah. And then accepting the idea of, uh, of the special status of Malays and other natives as specified in the Malaysian constitution. Why do I say this? Because this is part of our history. You cannot deny history. Uh, and of course, this is in Article 153 and so on. We can debate that later. Uh, so Malays are considered to be original peoples. So are the natives of Sabah and Sarawak. So are the Oranasi. And then therefore, we should therefore have another uh, you know, uh, requirement as multi, multi, multicultural citizens, citizens or the, the state should have it. That is the protection of the special positions of Orang Asli, Orang Asa, which are the original peoples, right? Of, of, of these, uh, these territories, as we know it historically and anthropologically speaking, right? And of course, protecting the distinctive cultures of ethnic minorities, whether they are First Nations or they are ethnic communities. That's the meaning of multiculturalism for me. And if you look at the Malaysian constitution, it's all in my PowerPoint, full of words, I'm sorry to say. Um, Article 3 does state that Islam is the religion of the federation, federation, huh? religion of federation, although religion is actually a purview of the states. Never, nevertheless, it is there. It's historical. It's been there since 1957. Uh, so maybe that's another factor in our multiculturalism that we have to think about and talk about. And, and interrogate and, and, and see where we go from there. Article five states very clearly the fundamental liberties of all individuals, and, and I would say as citizens in Malaysia, fundamental liberties, uh, you know, you have the right to, to trial, you have the right to everything, you're a lawyer, you know that. Article 11 talks about religious freedom. Everybody is free to practice their own religion, but you're not supposed to proselytize. You practice your own, but don't try to spread it to another uh, an, an, another religious group. Article 153, as you say, as I said, special position of the Malays and the natives of Sabah and Sarawak uh, after Malaysia Day um, uh, in 1963. And there are uh, there's a specific set of articles that also I think is very important now today to recognize the special position of Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, what what uh, what we like to call MA MA63 today. So in Article 61A, and I think it's uh, A, A to E as well, yeah. some of them were repealed. Uh, Sabah and Sarawak state rights are very clearly stated there. For example, the use of English for the, for the, for the first 10 years. By the way, the 10 years have expired. So, you know, uh, first 10 years after Malaysia Day. So this is 2023, I'm, I'm just guessing. But anyway, uh, the use of English and various other things, customary rights, uh, land rights, etc., of the natives and so on, all of them are in that constitution. Uh, and then the, the, the one that is very unfortunately not specified sufficiently are the rights of Orang Asli. We know them as Orang Asli, however, in the constitution, they're known as Aboriginal peoples. Uh, they, are, they are, in a way, the least uh, looked after in our current uh, you know, configuration of citizenship now. But, and we set up this Jabatan Hal Al Ewa or Asli to, to look at them, but a lot of proselytization even takes place among the Orang Asli to turn them to Muslims, you know? Anyway, that's Malaysia today. And I, I would say that those are the basic uh, fundamentals or fundamentals that we would have to incorporate as uh, our idea of an, of an inclusive Malays Malaysia, a Malaysian nation state. I am just focusing on cultural and ethnic issues. There are many other inclusive matters. For example, the rights of women, right? Uh, uh, you know, all, all the different minorities, including, including uh, physically challenged people and so on. I think all that should be part of this inclusive nation, but obviously, you know, it take a long time for me to talk about everything. And I think uh, the, 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 the idea of Malaysia Madani, which is another construct, <laughs> A new construct. Mind you, Anwar Ibrahim spoke about it way back uh, when he talked about Masyarakat Sibel, right? Uh, and, and it be became uh, Masyarakat Madani then. 
now we call it Malaysia Madani, uh, they are not a bad place to start thinking about reworking our, our, our project of multicultural cultural citizenship, because I think it is still work in progress, right? And I put up this uh, graphic here, it's full of words here. Um, uh, the Malaysian Madani concept, as you know, has about six principles, nothing wrong with them, you know. Uh, uh, Kemampanan, sustainability, kesejahteraan, prosperity, diajipta, innovation, respect, uh, trust, compassion, etc. And in fact, uh, among, among the stipulations of its uh, six principles are the recognition of minorities, uh, a humane economy, uh, the government will be committed uh, to the NA63, a lot yeah, of words. <laughs> it's all there, it's all there. So not a bad place to start, uh, but put the words into action. That, that's what I would say, yeah. How are we doing for time? So, good, okay. good, good. So I, I would say um, that, that that is the situation that we have now. Now, if I were to take a reality check now, now I put on my hat as a so-called political scientist <laughs> and look at what is happening in Malaysia today. Um, you know, and I've written about this as well. Malaysia is clearly, when you look at the political, the politics of it, it is a very divided uh, country in the sense of the way politics has been configured, right? Uh, we have ethnic parties. Uh, we also have multi-ethnic, uh, you know, uh, entities uh, which, which have comprised of different ethnic groups. Uh, but generally speaking, I would say, just speaking from a, a, a really realist political scientist position, uh, the way politics has articulated or, or you know happened in Malaysia is been quite ethnic. You know, I, I think we can't run about it. That said, I think we have been democratic. I think that we cannot, uh, we cannot say we have not been. And there, 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 we've had only a, a, a particular period where democracy was uh, held in advance for about 22 months or so yeah. after the May 13th. The rest of the time we've had elections until GE15, right? So in terms of democracy, Malaysia is a practicing democracy. Uh, and for me, ethnic uh, politics means the sharing of power, which also has happened. Uh, you know, uh, Alliance uh, was the first power sharing arrangement that we had. Tunku Abdul Rahman did it, right? Uh, that was Malaya. And subsequent to that, we have had Barisan uh, National, which was uh, Tun Razak. And of course, it was the most, if you talk about unity government at that period, it was like the most unified part. So, yeah. It was post May 69. And, we, and so on and so on. I mean, I don't have to rehearse everything with you uh, until today. Uh, and you look at the most recent elections. Um, again, we've had two basically multi-ethnic coalitions contesting politics. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? You have the PN on one end, one side, and you have the PH, but PH then BN <laughs> that came after the election. They became a coalition government. Uh, and uh, I have I have three graphs here which you can't see unfortunately. I think the audience in in Facebook might be able to see. Uh, it's even small for me. I'm so sorry. I should have put them in separate uh, separate uh, you know uh, uh, sort of slides. But basically, the first slide shows the Pakatan Harapan winning most of its seats in areas which are non-Malay. See, so we are very divided. The P, 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 Perikata National winning predominantly it, all, all its seats from 60% and above, Malay majority, right? And the Barisan National also winning its seats fewer than the, uh, the Perikata National. Uh, you know, the end has really dropped in terms of its share of the vote, uh, a share of its seats, uh, also from about 60% onwards. So if you look at those graphs, you can see there is this division in Malaysian politics, right? And then, then you also have Sabah and Sarawak, which I didn't analyze here, which is much more mixed. The picture is much more mixed. Uh, and uh, the way politics is configured in Malaysia gives that tendency. And I will talk about, towards the end of the talk, why we should change this. Why should we change our, our political system? Why we should engineer our political system away from ethnic politics? All right, the next slide. 
Ah, the next slide is about the, uh, let me take a sip of water. The most recent developments, which is the six elections. I think a lot of people are feeling a little unhappy or disturbed. I don't know what the term is, a little worried about the situation. Uh, is Malaysia becoming more polarized? You know, if you look at Aliran magazines uh, all the way back to the 70s, huh? uh, we, we've had talked about polarization since then. So it's a continuing thing. It's not new at all. Uh, but through uh, uh, 2023, uh, you know, uh, we, we are seeing uh, increased polarization after the six state elections which we just held last month, right? Um, was it this month? Last, last, month. last month. And uh, what we see is, uh, you can't see the slides here, I'm so sorry. Uh, the P PHBN, 99 seats, 40% of the seats. PN, 146 seats, 60% of the seats. That, and most of the PN seats have been gains. It's all here in the figures. Uh, the, the PHBN have receded in terms of, of seats. You know? For example, just to get, get it. Pass went from 76 to 105. So people are getting worried. Are we going to get an Islamic state, et cetera? You know, Pass becomes so strong. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Bersatu went from 12 to 40. These are state seats. Huh? These are the 145 uh, state seats. But let's look at the popular vote, though, right? Uh, they, well, generally speaking, increased PN Malay support in the east and northeast of Malaysia. We know that it's become a belt yeah. already, more or less. Pass, very dominant there. Uh, Kelantan, Trangana has always been there. Kedah, you know, but now Kedah is very much in the, in the past, uh, you know, belt as well. Uh, and of course, now we add PN. PN is a new addition, really, you know, Pass. The, the party that's really strong is past. Yeah. PN is just a, a split of Amno, really. It might disappear in the future, but for now it's there, right? Uh, strong Malay, non Malay support, non Muslim support has always been on the West Coast. Again, so that's the, the political geography of Malaysia is also like that. There's a division. Okay. And then you have Sab Sabah and Sarawak as another very, very interesting, unique component. So, in that sense, we are diverse. And, and we have balance. <laughs> uh, if you look at the popular votes, uh, uh, looking at my watch, uh, the, the, obviously the PN vote went up very high, uh, considerably. Kedah, it went up by 14.2%. Kelantan, not much, 5.5. Trangano, 6.0. In Selangor, it went, went up by 10.3. Uh, I wouldn't be alarmed by this now. And Negeri Sembilan by 15.7 uh, by in terms of uh, PN vote share. But if you look at the overall picture of the state elections, the popular vote, 50-50. We're right down the middle, 50-50, <laughs> about 50-50. So uh, that's the picture, uh, the, the latest uh, kind of development you see uh, in terms of how we should, uh, I'm looking at political realities to think through how we should then move forward in terms of an inclusive, uh, you know, uh, 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 multicultural, state. So now I'm coming towards the end of my presentation, but I will talk about what I think needs to be done. Uh, basically, to become more inclusive, we need to have two kinds of uh, reforms, you might call it. Some are ongoing, uh, work in progress, etc. Some have been proposed, they're on the table, but not carried out, you know. Uh, so I put it down as structural on one side, and this would mean uh, electoral process and reform, uh, reviewing our very flawed first past the post uh, kind of uh, pol uh, political, you know, uh, although it serves well, it serves well for, so many, for six decades. Uh, and actually 66 uh, years, if you include the Federation of Malaysia. Uh, and in fact, there is a proposal on the table. It was uh, put out by the PH government uh, under the Electoral uh, Commission. Yeah? Uh, electoral reform uh, uh, committee uh, and i want to discuss that later and of course another structural reform is to have this has been going on for a long time local government senate elections more representation for women ethnic minorities currently they all ask me you know you put them have some seats in the in the uh, senate and so on and, and i think we should do a little bit more of that sort of thing structural and then the other side is a more 
participatory kind of uh, uh, what I call participatory democracy, create more channels uh, for political participation at different levels, kind of related to the structural part, but maybe at the civil society level. And that, to be, to be truthful, I mean, we have been doing this. It's been ongoing, nothing to do with the state, people themselves, you know, Malaysians are, are like that. We, we, we have been doing these things ourselves. And the very important thing I would say in terms of religious harmony is to revive an interfaith commission. That was Katul uh, in, in, in the period of Patla. I don't know, Isabel, yeah. you remember that? You remember that, yeah? Uh, uh, some of us were quite involved. And in fact, I was chairing a, an Aliran meeting in Penang, uh, talking about the interfaith commission where we were, you know, disrupted by some uh, hecklers. Yeah. You know, uh, Shah Faruqi was speaking and I was there. So I would think we should think again about the possibility of creating this kind of interfaith uh, forum, uh, which should include the Muslims, because currently we have the MCCB's CHST. Yeah. ST. ST. Uh, can you remember what it is? The, the Consultative Council of Buddhists, Hindus, and everybody. That doesn't include Muslims. Yeah. So nice. it, it's not multicultural enough, right? It's, it cannot be. So this participatory democracy must also occur at that level. It's also structural, you know, uh, but, but then people have to get involved in it uh, and do those sorts of things. So two levels of engagement are needed. In my humble opinion, we need to have the official them uh, involved uh, with the structural changes that need to be carried out, official governmental and civil society uh, continued, uh, you know, kind of uh, engagement uh, to make uh, ourselves much more multicultural. So my final bit of the, uh, of talk will be the idea of this is one part of it only, uh, and that's electoral reform because that has been on the table for a while. One of the major um, uh, promote uh, the ma major sort of activists on this is uh, Professor Wang Ching Huan. He's, he's done a lot of work. I've read some of his work, <clears throat> and in fact, uh, he was part of the ele electoral. Uh, change cluster or whatever within this uh, electoral reform committee that was set up by the PH government after 2018. So on 30 January 2020, the chairman of that committee, which was Abdul Rashid Abdul Rahman, actually submitted his interim report to Made for a switch to a mixed system for Malaysia, PR, proportional representation, as well as some aspects of first past the post. Very complicated, maybe, but I'll just give you the broad outline of it, uh, you know, because but we can talk about it some more. So the interim report was apparently the result of internal consultation among his committee, as well as with 21 stakeholders and civil society groups. I was in Penang actually at that point of time when he came to talk to some people, this Abdul Rashid guy. And they also went abroad to, to look at all the electoral system, all the various kinds of electoral systems, New Zealand and where, where else, Australia and so on, Germany and so on. So they did a lot of work. Uh, and the main goal of the electoral reform was to address the acknowledged flaws of our system, gerrymandering, malapportionment, right? So then the guy actually came up with a proposal. Uh, he, he came up with a proposal to uh, pass, uh, uh, go on from the, his graphic was to show how how our first past the post system is rather flawed. He, he presented a graphic. This is all public knowledge uh, to say that, you know, what happens in a first past the post system, if I very quickly summarize, is that you can win 40% of the vote, three persons on testing, you win 40%, you won. You don't have to win 50% of votes, right? So there are a lot of what, what electoral uh, analysts call wasted votes. They don't get represented. So the other, in fact, a majority of people can end up 60% yeah. not being actually represented because the person who won was the one who only won 40%. So how do we correct this? Most places in the world, including Germany, New Zealand, Australia, and so on, Australia is more complicated, but a lot of places have implemented PR, proportional representation. However, proportional representation uh, some argue can create instability because you can have a whole plethora of different groups holding small shares. Germany took uh, months for them to even Germany 
uh, to come together to form a government because of the, the distribution of seats, right? Uh, but he came up with an interesting one, you know? I mean, work in progress, we can always consider it. Uh, he says the PR system can be implemented for the 2222 parliamentary seats uh, as indicated in Article 46 of our Malaysian Constitution, which stipulates uh, all the different uh, seats, the number of seats that are held. You don't have the graphic in front of you, uh, you know, like Johor's 26, 26 Kedah 15, etc. We maintain that one, right? Uh, and then uh, the, the winning party or coalition of parties must therefore secure, secure 112 uh, of all 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 states in that area, but under PR system, a minimum threshold of say about 5%, it must mean at least 5% of votes will be required. Uh, so then this will be one tier. The second tier will be maintain the first past support system for state elections, the usual single member constituency. So you have two systems. Not bad, I suppose, you know, you know, you can. So the national one is what, but then you still have to decide whether you want to have uh, you know, it's quite complicated. You know, Malaysia as one whole district, or do you break it up like in the German German system? They break it up into about sixteen districts. For example, we can have Sabah and Sarawak as separate districts, and Peninsular Malaysia as one district, or as one one voting area where you where you tot up the proportional votes, right? Anyway, at least it's on the table. But of course, it never saw the light of day because uh, Sheraton moved and everything happened. <laughs> Uh, so we never got around to doing any implementation. We are still with our present system. Why do I say this may be good for a more inclusive Malaysia? It's a long shot, but I think that uh, first we would be implementing the cardinal principle of uh, one man, one person, one vote, one, one person, one vote, and one person, one value, uh, but through proportionality. So your Hopefully, a lot of votes won't be wasted. Everybody's uh, vote is counted, you know. So PR makes sure that that is done. A possible consequence of it is that it also eliminates all these, what we call vote banks. For example, the Felda area, which has about 56, 54, 54 to 56 seats, always been won for a long time by the ruling party. In fact, in the old days, it was uh, BN. Now, increasingly, it's been a bit more, but it, it, it reduces the, the idea, the, this kind of patronage politics that is very prevalent in Malaysia. You know, pay a lot of money, give them subsidies and so on. And then uh, it helps to distribute the vote more evenly. The proposal could also create better gender balance because you can have more women in lists, you know, you can put more women into the lists, the party lists. Uh, for example, you could say, which is a UN uh, requirement, 30%. Malaysia today represents 37% of, of MP should be women. Today, Malaysia has only 30.5% of women in parliament. It went down 1%. One, one, three. One, three. one three. We are very poor, very poor in terms of, of gender representation. And the system that our friend, uh, uh, the former uh, EC uh, Electoral Commission, uh, committee chairman is proposing has allows for a learning curve. You know, it's got the, the old system for states and the new system for the federal. Uh, so we can get used to the idea uh, and, 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 and get around to accepting it. Definitely will reduce the problem of gerrymandering, malapportionment. Uh, and finally, I think it could steer us towards what political scientists call centripetal systems rather than centrifugal systems. <laughs> anyway, those are all political science things. Most, more moderate kind of politics uh, rather than, and allowing for therefore more progressive politics. Uh, so those are my thoughts. Uh, I think we can have, yeah. Those are my thoughts that we can, I mean, they're very broad ranging, uh, but I think ultimately, I think our, the Malaysian nation, uh, as, we, as we are sitting here and thinking about Malaysia Day, uh, and what uh, we do in the future, I think we must hold on to our principles of uh, equal worth of citizens, multicultural uh, practices, and of course, uh, you know, celebrating our diversity. Thank you very much. <laughs>